traveling to Rome after I graduated from high school as part of a summer trip throughout Europe with a classmate of mine, um, going into the Pantheon in Rome and experiencing that volume of space, that sort of sphere um, of pure uh, space, particularly in contrast to the kind of cacophony of the urban context that the building sits in, was really breathtaking and uh, left a lasting impression on me. Um, and then I think of current buildings or more recent buildings that I came to know through my studies. Certainly Kahn's buildings have been uh, made a very strong and lasting impression on me. I think of his buildings in the same way as the Pantheon as kind of timeless. They capture qualities of space and material and light uh, and they continue to function um, as important parts of the places in which they're located. And so. Um, Khan is someone, a touchstone that I come back to over and over again, and I think of his work as being fresh every time I experience it. I'm probably an unusual person in that I was interested in being an architect uh, starting when I was about six years old. I uh, had family friends who were architects. My parents visited their offices. My godfather was an architect. He had worked for Marcel Breuer. And so I was aware that architects did something interesting and special. I wasn't certain all of the things that were involved in being an architect, but I was exposed to it at an early age. And in fact, funny story, I wrote a poem for the elementary school newspaper called Ink Spots, which I titled, I Am an Architect. And it was about a six line poem. And then a classmate whose father um, was an architect actually gave me a job offer, wrote me a letter on his letterhead uh, indicating a firm job offer, work to commence 1985. Of course, he wrote this to me in 1969. And so I treasured this letter and actually I ended up working for his firm uh, during summers when I was in college in the early 80s. I think mostly for me, the process of going to university and, and my studies was trying to figure out, was I sure about this inclination that I had from such an early age and did I have opportunities to actually try other things that might um, spur interest in things outside of architecture. But the more I learned, the more uh, interested I became. The greatest challenge of doing architecture is the social dimension, engaging with other people. Um, it's not a challenge in a negative sense, it's a challenge and it has great potential to expand um, what you're doing to encompass and, and um, better sort of broader conditions outside of um, yourself. How we create buildings and spaces that are directly connected to the public, how people use space, experience it. but. Also, the amount of challenge is, in a way, directly proportional to the degree of publicness that it has, because it requires engaging very diverse constituencies, working with uh, larger teams of people. And so you have to, in a way, be comfortable, on the one hand, relinquishing a level of control in order to um, engage a broader group of people, both collaborators as well as people who will use the project. Uh, but on the other hand, the rewards for that can be really um, satisfying because you begin to see your projects in use over time and how they build and add to the cities and the places that we inhabit. Architecture is always changing and it's very hard to predict um, what the future will be like. Uh, the tools that we use um, are very different than when I was educated. The processes by which buildings are made are radically changing. So it's, I honestly can't say I can predict what the future will be, but what we try to do in our firm is continuously engage and learn from the work that we're doing to help prepare ourselves to meet the challenges of the future. And I think anyone who's involved in the profession has to be constantly aware um, of learning from what they're doing and sort of growing their knowledge. The situation is dynamic, nothing's standing still. So, you know, it's a constant engagement, really, process to learn.